We are safe here. The Baron's idea for how to defeat the evil that is plaguing this land is unorthodox, sure, but perhaps the only way to defeat death is by celebrating life. We're after all all alive in the city, in spite of the oppressive darkness and the horrors in the forests. As long as there is life, there is hope, and where there is hope, there will be light. But why did all those people in the square have to suffer? And why does the population of Valakai seem so tense and afraid? Morning Lord, may your light reveal the truth. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. You awaken to be greeted, as always, by a gloomy, miserable morning. Still, you can hear activity outside the door. People are about and awake. What do you do? I wake up and I think about what we have in store for the day. The, the plan that we are we're going to go out and investigate something. We're going to... We're going to be helping people in a very practical, very direct way. It's, in a way, it's so different from the life I had before this, when I would wake up to yet another long day of prayers and scrubbing the floors at the Sung of the Morning Temple, another day of listening to Keldat the uh, Warmir and of, yes, practicing together with Bram and Blaine. This is refreshing. This is... this is life. Again. In spite of all this darkness, it's... it's not bad. I think to myself as I do my morning routines and I make my prayer and I feel that Lathander is far away, but... Somehow, it feels a little bit closer today. I uh, sit on the side of my bed and uh, I am putting on my braces and the rest of my armor and closing the buckle for my sword belt and all that and I'm I'm talking a bit as I go through this uh, routine I uh, I talk about how we are uh, yeah this is what we're going to do we're on the right path now I think we just need to find that blade it's interesting this place it is you think the blade will simply be in our path I think we are somehow being led towards it. I can't say how, but I've seen it again in my dream. Well, not the actual blade itself, but I know that's what we're going to need. We need the blaze, and, well, until we find it, I'm probably going to need a longbow if we're going to start. Poaching direwolves. <laughs> well, the ways of the gods are difficult to understand sometimes. But as long as you have faith, we will find that blade. I have faith in, in that. I have faith in you and I have faith in us. Today will be a good day. I can feel it. Indeed, and you feel confident. Although for a moment you do think of the dreams you had last night, both of you. You especially, Roman. All this talk of a blade. It was definitely one of the things she spoke of, but it was not the only thing. You remember she spoke of quite a few things. This blade could be one important part, but there are other parts perhaps you haven't seen yet. Or maybe you have, and you're just not sure how important they are. Yes. I try to refresh my memory around what I could have seen if... Have we already seen so many of, of, of the things that she mentioned, or, or is it just my mind playing tricks on me? Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't like to think of troubling things like that. No, I've decided that today will be a good day, so it will be. 
Lathandra help me. I'm annoyed with the half-elf that we met last night. I don't know why, but I found him annoying. I want to see if I find him for breakfast and I would talk to him. He's not seemed to be about. Right now, there are very few patrons in the inn. Perhaps they don't get much business in the morning. Irina is poking at her breakfast. She seems, as usual, a little distracted. Ismark, though, seems in a good mood. He eats and he greets you. Ah, my friends, my friends, welcome. Hard to believe that our adventure together is almost over, but I feel good. Today, I shall take Irina to the church. She will find sanctuary there, and then hopefully she will be protected here. Safer, at least, than she was at home. I uh, wolf down my breakfast, and I think of that too, and oh, it's uh, a bit of a shame if something would happen to her while we were away on another mission. Um, but uh, not much to be done about that. He hands a small box then to the pair of you. Inside is an assortment of money roughly reaching about 30-40 gold pieces. Your payment, I'm sorry I cannot offer you more, but this is truly all we had. Hmm. I, uh, start sorting us out and counting out my share. Nothing odd about that, and, uh, I just wordlessly put it in uh, my other pouches. Thank you, Ismark. I, uh, I don't really know what to say. I'm glad that, that your, your sister has reached safety here, and I truly hope that, that life will come back to, to your town that everything will be as it used to be. With you as the Burgomaster, I'm I'm sure that things will be will be good. You just have to believe in the Morning Lord and Lathander. Thank you, my friend, thank you. It means a lot to me. Owen comes over and collects your finished breakfasts and just remarks. One word of advice, my friends. I would travel sooner rather than later. We noticed you only seem to have one horse. Perhaps it belongs to the pair of you, so you can borrow one of our horses as you are assisting us with our family problems. But yes, six hours to the vineyard from here, but you don't want to be out too late. The roads are dangerous at night. All right, that's fine. Uh, and so we will need some basic directions, and uh, I might need to uh, buy myself a... Uh, a longbow or something similar, a good ranged weapon. Do you know if there's any store in here that would have such a thing? He nods and remarks that in the eastern end of town, where you entered from, there are shops. The Arasek Storeyard, in fact, should be able to have something as simple as a longbow. And I finish my meal and um, I get ready to leave. I do as well. So as you get up, Ismark and Irina stand and Ismark moves to... Well, shake your hand and remark, Very well, you two will be heading for this little mission. I shall take Irina to the church and sort things out there. Is that all right with you two? That sounds like a plan. Uh, I expect we'll be seeing you again late tonight, perhaps, when we come back. I think as soon as I get Irina to the church, I shall be heading off myself. I'm afraid I shouldn't. I, I, it'd be wise for me to try and get back before nightfall. I think by myself, with just one horse and the wagon, I can I can make it back quickly. In fact, perhaps I'll leave the wagon here with you, Irina. You can do as you wish with it. Uh, it would slow me down. Yes, it would be better if I go back on horse. I uh, reach out to shake his hand that he held out to me and uh, uh, don't make much more fuss about it than that. He shakes your hand nods, and then begins to lead Irina outside. You assume to commence his plan. What do the two of you do? I say after him, Morning Lord, light your way, Ismark. Good luck. So, um, would you like to accompany me to the shops, or shall we meet up here after I'm done? I wouldn't mind seeing the shop. Let us go together. Don't know if there's any of that, uh, any, any of those men like that, the one that was hanging around outside the barrens. Best that we move together, yes? Safety in numbers. Uh, I agree. I don't trust people in this town. You leave the tavern, nodding farewell to Ismark and Irina as they depart in a direction opposite from you. 
You suppose you can see Irina later. She will be at this church, St. Andrew's. You go the directions you were given, going back past that town square. All those new festival posters are now up. You still see people in donkey head masks, tied in stockades. You see a lot of people about now, scuffling about. A few people offer you glances, their expressions blank. One or two people seem to acknowledge you and offer a nod. Interesting how there's that difference. Hmm. You notice a few children wearing those smiley face masks with the red paint dripping a little at the mouth and eyes. Throwing some rotten fruit at one person in a stockade, they seem to be enjoying themselves as the person in the stockade whimpers in misery and discomfort. I let out a grunt of laughter at this. It's, it's, it's uh, just too funny with these donkey masks. <laughs> Poor souls, I... I wonder what they have done to to deserve to be there if they have done anything at all. But, um, well, it does seem as if the, the law of this place is, is responsible for putting them there. We should, we should not interfere, I think. We should not interfere. Let us go to this shop. You make your way past the town square, back to the entrance to the town, and here it seems the area becomes slightly more dedicated to shops. You pass... A few. You notice one place has a sign, Coffin Maker. You walk past that to see then a few shops beyond a place that sounds like it sells toys, actually. You notice some strange little marionette puppets and little carousels in a window covered in dust. This place seems open for business, this toy shop. It's called Blinsky Toys. And then a few steps along, you think you see this wagon yard. It seems to be a place with a few wagons currently in stow. Perhaps you can rent things out. And there is a little shop area and a door next to it. You notice one of the wagons is very brightly coloured. Lots of blues, greens and yellow. It seems to stand out a lot from the other wagons in the area. What do you do? I send a Roman a glance and I ask, Miss Tarney? Hmm, I suppose so. Do we see any weapon stores? This shop has weapons in the window, old bits mm. of armour, some bags. It looks like a general supply store. Could be a good place to start. Do you look more at that wagon then as you pass? I'm sort of in my own thoughts, actually, mostly. I do, yes, throw a glance at it, uh, knowing that the Vistani have the power to, to leave this place. Of course, makes them interesting uh, to me. Curiosity, if nothing else. Yes, I, I look towards it. You step over to inspect the painted wagon. Getting a little closer, you notice the paint looks a bit old. It's seen some wear and tear. You don't really think now, as you look at it, it looks quite as elaborate as the Vistani wagons. They seem to have little bits of decoration everywhere. This seems more utilitarian herian in its colours. You also notice now a sign hanging off it. Rictavio's Carnival of Wonders. You see only one obvious door padlocked with a big lock. Our friend from the inn, I see, Rictavio. Oh, the half-elf, I say from atop my horse. Right. Yes, this is apparently his Cart. Well, it's locked, he's not around, and he didn't seem to be particularly happy to share his secrets anyways. Let us, uh, let us get what we need so that we can uh, start today's journey. Hmm. I wonder what that is. I wonder what he does. A carnival. Is it a thing showing up small exotic items and stuff? Or is he some sort of... Ah, never mind. And I rein my horse to move towards the, the general stall and time up there. Just before you enter the stall, you have now stood near this uh, wagon for a few moments, haven't you? Roshek, you have good hearing. Roll me a perception check, please. Twelve. Just as you're about to enter the stall, you think for a moment you... Notice some movement near the wagon, but you blink, 
It's gone. I assume you just head into the store. I blink, it's gone. I stop. And I lean out and I look. Do I see something? No? No, it's just a wagon sitting there. You thought you saw it move a little, but it seems silent now and still. I shrug and I, I go into the shop. You go into the shop and see an assortment of goods and wares. There is a shopkeeper there, old, greying hair. He has a wife assisting him. And if you're looking to get a longbow, you will find it. Pay a reasonable sum. Anything else you want from the shop while you're here? I look around for any... For any books that could be interesting. I, uh, start to more and more consider myself a student of war. It is a fact that when I'm on the road and I find either books or libraries, I like finding stuff that is about war and warfare and things like that. And it's, uh, I'm starting to become a little bit of a scholar of it. Just, just a bit. You look over some shelves, but to be honest, you don't find anything that looks that interesting. Some books on cookery, a little bit of basic armor maintenance book. Obviously, they don't have a large selection here. No. Right. Roman, what are you doing while he is busy shopping away? I'm, um, looking around in the shop, getting a little bit bored with all this looking at these bows. I I go outside the, the shop, just stand outside the door, and I... I stare at that cart, Rictavius' cart, the man with the secrets. Roll me a perception check. 21. As you're watching the wagon, you briefly look away, just for a moment, just to look down the street, and you notice in a little alleyway nearby, the man from last night. You notice him very well, this was a good role, he is definitely an old man with a grey beard and he is smoking a pipe and watching you. Although again, as you stare directly at him, he sort of coughs and starts moving away. This time, knowing that he's following us, I start rushing after him. Uh, before I do that, I, I yell, Rushik, the, the, the man, the, the man in grey, and, and then I just start moving after him. Hold, hold friend, friend, I wish you no harm. Please. As you do this, you also then notice a large shudder come from that wagon right next to you, and you think you hear something moving inside, a sort of growl. What do you do? In the cart? Ah, oh, but, but the man, I, I, need to, I need to catch him. I need to find him. I try to move after him. And I finish up my business, hearing him shout outside, and I pay, and... I go outside to see him rushing off, and do I notice the growl in the wagon as well? You would not, as it was quite quick and you've just sort of come out, your board, you would just, your attention was full, solely on a Roman shouting, this man, this man! So what do you do? I I stand for a bit and I like, what's going on? Why, why is he running after him? And I just... I, I, I just watch what they're doing, basically. I don't, I don't, I'm not too eager to follow him. I'm trying to persuade the man to stop, um, knowing that he can hear me. I'm trying to make him understand that I wish him no harm, that I'm just simply looking to speak to him, um, that he's obviously interested in, in me. Having a conversation might not, uh, might not hurt him. So I'm trying to just yell, yeah, stop, friend, friend, stop, let us just speak. I wish you no harm. In that case, roll a persuasion check. Twelve. No, you call out and he looks behind him for a moment and sort of mutters something under his breath and very quickly starts, not running away, but just trying to walk down back into the main thoroughfare, uh, trying to get lost in another alleyway. Uh, seeing that he... Disappears there. I I do not wish to pursue him in, into alleys where there might be uh, an ambush, perhaps waiting. I still my curiosity and I return back to the shop, back to back to Roshik. And there I stand, tying up the longbow to the saddle. And I ask, was that the same man from yesterday? 
It was. He is clearly following us. He didn't seem to be a dangerous one. I had hoped to exchange a few words with him and perhaps try to understand what it is that he wants. But, uh, well, he did not give me the time of day and, yes, I did not dare pursue him alone. Not here in this unknown place. And anyways, we have places to be, things to do. Yes. I raised my eyebrows. Probably just... Some old man so just curious about the new people in town. It's it's very likely. Or or perhaps perhaps it is someone who is not on particularly friendly terms with the Baron. Hmm. Well, either way, doesn't matter anymore. Well, he does seem to be a controversial type, from what I understand of people. And I swing myself up in the saddle. I do the same on uh, my horse. Yes, he does. But one cannot argue with the fact that he does seem to keep this place safer than most others. There is at least some degree of hope here, and that is something. Although, yes, some of his methods are perhaps a little bit questionable. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit funny with these carnivals of this and that. It's like keep spirits light but with a military presence I don't know he seems just like an odd one indeed you notice a few more people moving by you as you speak those masks the smiley faces painted white with red ink for the mouth and nose again one passes by you Roshik and you can't help but feel that the mouth looks like it's dribbling a little red almost like blood I wonder if those have to do with the carnival as well. I, uh, I try and stop. Is it it's children wearing these masks, or is it just random people? These people seem to be adults walking past with these masks on. Stop, uh, friend. Uh, I, I have a question. Would you have a, a moment to spare, perhaps? You were talking to a group of people. They shuffle on a little, although one of them sort of turns and remarks it. I yes, priest. Uh, what do you want? I, I, we wish for no. Trouble. No, of course, of course. I'm simply curious. I'm a traveler in these lands. This, this mask that you're wearing, it's. I haven't seen it before. What, what is it of? It is for the festival, the festival of the blazing sun. It is a happy face. It shows we are happy and we are all is well. This man remarks, and the two others with him sort of mutter. All is well. And what about that red stuff around the mouth? What's that supposed to be? The man removes the mask, showing an average-looking man behind it, quite young. It's paint is how we painted on the happy face. It's red ink. It's lucky colour. Lucky colour. Roll insight, Roman. Nine. These people seem a little uneased. Maybe they have just uh, are distracted by Roshek. They seem to be studying him a little. Their expression fearful. As they have all now removed their masks. They cough a little and sort of start heading off, if that's all you have to say to them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was simply curious about that mask. I hope you will have a good festival. They hurry off, their heads bowed, slouched. Again, the one you were speaking to looks at you for a moment. The other two immediately seem to be completely oblivious once more and are just walking along. That oblivious look that so many people here seem to have. What do you think that's all about? That that look, like that innkeeper in that in Barovia. Like some of the the people that we've met. That it's as if they're it's as if they're not fully here. It's as if they're not fully human anymore. As if they've lost that spark within them. Do you know what I mean? Don't you just think that they're a bit oppressed by the ruler of the lands and kind of feeling a bit miserable? I mean, they are dolls in a dollhouse, after all. I suppose you're right. It just... I don't know. I can't help but feel that there's more to it than that. That there's... Hmm, that there's something that is fundamentally broken within them. But, well... Perhaps we can do something about that. Perhaps we can bring back the hope. Yes. Let us go. It is certainly time now. 
and uh, I start catching up speed my horse towards the gates to get out of here and start heading towards the winery. You both have horses and you both begin to ride out of town. Roman, you can't help but think you had something there. Spark, you think that's it exactly, your insight skill. It's like something missing. Maybe they are just depressed. Maybe you can bring them hope and something will come back to those faces. But yes, it seems very distinctive though. The barman, Izek, a few others you've seen now in this town with a lot of people. It looks very similar, and yet people like Irina, Ismark, and that Garv, the talkative one. It was different. As you are heading towards the gates on the western side of town, you pass by the inn once more, and you uh, notice the half-elf, Roshek. Outside the inn, smoking a pipe, he watches you as you ride past, and you continue riding, eventually coming by a church. This must be St. Andrew's Church, as you ride quickly past that, before finally coming to the outskirts of the town and to gates. What do you do? Well, as we ride past the half elf, I'm just thinking I would like to exchange a few words with him, having thought a bit about the cards that we were given by Madame Eva, but uh, we don't have time for that now. Better just head out as quickly as possible if we don't, if we want to get done before nightfall. Yes, I too want us to start our journey. Yes, you ride to the gates and two guards, noticing your approach, let you pass. They seem a little less tense during the daylight hours. And you ride out into the road, back onto that road, the old Slavic road you've been told of. That seems to be the main road to take. Forest again surrounds you to the left, to the right. You ride for a few bits and you see a small dusty pathway leading down as you ride past it you look and you think you see a little encampment on a hill well it's off the side of the road and I think you feel like quite confident to head onwards although you'd probably Roshek think to yourself it looked very similar to the Vistani camp from before perhaps there is another Vistani camp near the town noted and you ride you ride the road honest and true after all, your directions you were given were to follow the road and pay attention to signposts. You follow the road, making swift progress. Speed on your back, it's certainly quicker than riding in the wagon. Eventually, you come to an X intersection which branches to the northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. The lower half of a snapped wooden signpost thrusts upward at an angle near the eastern elbow of this intersection. The top half of the sign, featuring arms pointed in four directions, lies in the weeds nearby. What do you do? So it's completely broken? Yes, it's snapped off and the actual information is lying on the side of the road. Ugh, <sighs> this is useless. And I look around, is there anyone else nearby? No other travellers out on the roads? No. I uh, get off my horse and to kneel down and pick up the signs. Well, as you pick it up, you misalign it a little, but you can see four directions. One says Kresek and Salonka Pass. One says Lake Baratok. One says Valakai and Ravenloft. And one says Berez. You seem to recall them mentioning that at one of the first signposts you were to head in the direction of Kresek. Hmm. Uh, and I have the different posts in my uh, hands, and I try to look at the signposts, try to figure out which one is which, and uh, what, what could have been broken off, you know, see if something fits with the sign, try to reach up and, uh, well, I'm very tall, so probably not too high, but... Adjusting it a little, you think to yourself, the sign pointing to Valakai must point to the road you've just come from. You align it that way, and now the road continuing directly in front of you is this Kresek, a road leading north, is this lake, and south is a place called Berez. You notice that this has been scratched out a little. It looks very worn. Berez? Berez. Hmm. All right. I think it's this way. I point towards the path that I think is towards Kresek. I, I concur. Certainly. Let us try that route. See where it leads us. 
Were you just sitting on your horse while I was trying to figure this out? I, um, seeing as you had approached it, I, I did sit there and and uh, watched you uh, try to make sense of, of the sign. But you figured it out. So uh, I grunt and I, I uh, sit up on my horse and uh, start moving towards that direction. You ride, swift and true, back on a road which snakes now through these woods. The air is thick and heavy here, but you are making good progress. It must only now be perhaps midday, maybe 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Definitely still daylight hours. You notice ravens in the sky once more, and it occurs to you, back at the little signpost area, there was a raven watching you. And you're pretty sure, Roshik, you've seen this bird a few times now, you're pretty sure it was Bertie. Yes, that's what you named him, wasn't it? That little raven, quite small, young looking. Hmm. It's a comforting thought by now. I uh, am starting to enjoy his company, this, this raven. Yes, it's almost like it's following you. Interesting. Although, that can't be right. Why would a raven be following you all this way? It's travelled quite a distance now. You continue riding. This stretch of the old Slavic road has multiple branches. One branch leads north, one branch leads south, and one continues onwards. A third branch heads west towards the Wizard of Wines Vrindery. There is a sign here, implying that that is the way. The north sign says Kresik. East, the direction you've come, is Valakai. This road southwest seems to be the one you wish to take. You also noticed, on the way here, another offshoot. You didn't follow it, because it looked again like a worn dirt path, but there did seem to be an old road leading off on the way here that led somewhere you don't know where. What do you do? So it wasn't a sign of a building or anything where it led to? No, that dirt path seemed to go directly into the forest. Is it mostly open space here, or is it mostly foresty? This is complete forest. You've been in woods for some time now. Yes, well, the sign points to where we want to go, yes? To the winery. Hmm, finally something useful. I start my horse towards that direction. Yes, let us go. After a half mile, the road becomes a muddy trail that meanders through the woods descending gradually until the trees part, revealing a mist-shrouded meadow. The trail splits. One branch heads west into the valley, and the other leads south into dark woods. A wooden signpost pointing to that little west intersection reads, Vineyard. Hmm. Mists. Do you remember the card with the mists? Yes. Yes. Do you think these are the mists that you get lost in and then just come back here when you are supposed to get out of here? <sighs> I... I do not know, Roshik, I do not know. These mists seem more natural than that. They do not seem similar to the ones when you entered. They were like a wall, blockading all the way. This is just clinging everywhere, like a mist that perhaps indicates it's going to rain shortly. I start laughing. Haha, <laughs> that was just a joke. Hmm. Now, let's head down this way, and we should be there soon. Yes, let's. Before we get stuck in the mud. A light drizzle begins to fall, and you come across unpainted fences, blindly following this trail you're now on, which skirts north of a sprawling vineyard before bending south towards a stately building. The fog takes on ghostly forms as it swirls between the neatly tended rows of grapevines. This rain, even though it is only maybe midday, twelve, one o'clock, things suddenly are dark now. There is mist and this rain, not a heavy rain, mind, light rain. Here and there you see rope-handled half-barrels used for hauling grapes. North of the trail is a large stand of trees. You notice a figure odd. I'm pretty sure there wasn't a figure there a moment ago. Someone is motioning towards you quickly. He seems urgent, like, come. Quick, quick, quick. Come this way, this way. I rein my horse towards him. It's quite suspicious, though. Yes, I move cautiously and uh, 
start to touch the the mace at, at my side. You ride towards this figure motioning for you to come into the forest, and you do. He, he, he nods and gestures. Friends, oh, greetings, what, what are you doing? Quick, quick, keep your heads down, keep your heads down. Heads down from what? He points towards the vineyard. You look and you see in this mist, nothing, just this uh, building, this vineyard, the fields where they grow the wine or grapes. And an awful lot of, um, I notice, little bushes, about 20, 30 little Lots of clumps of twigs and bushes in the area. We're here to investigate the problems with the vineyard, I say in a low voice. Who sent you? Well, the Baron sent us, but there's also, well, a sudden interest in the tavern that we stayed at. The Blue Water Inn? That would be the one. I see. I see. This is good. This is good. And then another figure seems to suddenly appear from the undergrowth. This one is an old man wearing a cloak. He carries a stick, or rather he bends down to pick up the stick and comes over. You have come from Valakai. You have come from my son's inn. Greetings. My name is Davian Martikov. Although I'm afraid you'll come at a very dangerous time. Please, you are in great danger. I appreciate your help, but you must be careful. I uh, get off the horse now. Do you care to elaborate? He points to the vineyard. Our vineyard has been taken. Taken by the wild men. The crazed barbarians. Uh, But they have taken, they came with a small army. It's right there in front of us. Creatures. Watch the bushes. And I squint towards the bushes. Try to make something out of it. Roll me a perception check. Six. You frown as you look at these bushes and see bushes. They look a little worse for wear. You notice there doesn't seem to be any leaves on them or any sort of fruit. You wonder what sort of bushes they are. But you think to yourself, this old man must be losing it. He is pointing at bushes. I am turning my gaze back to him and give him a look of, you know, completely... I don't... vexation, you know. He's, he's, he's just... He's a crazy old man. There's nothing there. Ah! Foolish boy! This man comes forward and, and makes with his staff to bonk you on the head. I... Uh, well, I, I just try to wave off the blow. He is only half serious as he tries to bonk you on the head. He grunts. Look closely. They are not... I see you are not looking carefully enough. What about you, priest? Can you see they are dangerous? I dismount the horse, and uh, I, too, look towards the vineyard, towards the bushes, towards where these supposed wild men are supposed to be. Shall I roll for perception? Yes. Twenty-one. It's at this point you notice, near the what you assume is the entrance to this vineyard, two men emerge from this area. They are covered in dirt and muck. They have some basic beast skins on. They are carrying large battle axes. They leave and seem to be surveying the area and then just start patrolling. They can't see you because you are quite a little distance away, especially with this mist and rain. But yes, there are people patrolling. And you can't help but notice that these bushes do not look like any bush you've ever seen. They do not have any leaves on them. There is no fruit growing. If anything, they look almost like dried out husks of bushes. So how many are there? I can't see. Hard to tell. From this angle, you can count maybe at least 20, 30 of these little bush things. Two men now you can see, Roche coming out of the house, but you can't see anything else from here. You've also both suddenly noticed there are quite a few people with you now. There's also another few men. Uh, There is a woman. There are even some children. They all seem to have just been hiding in this area. You're not quite sure, though, why they've all suddenly become so... You're pretty sure they weren't there a moment ago, but they definitely are now. 
they have chased you away from the vineyard. Is that what has happened? How, how, how many are they? Do you know? Among the creatures, there are many. They're also led by their druids. They are dangerous people. We just managed to get the children out. But I'm afraid now they have the place under siege. We've been waiting for help. We've been kind to come up with a plan, but my boys are afraid, and rightfully so. We do not wish to lose anyone. Uh, they've never done this before. I know what they are after. I know what they are after. Yes. Mm. And the younger one, Adrian, goes, Father, they don't need to know about that. But no. No, but... If you wish to help us, young travellers, then, well, perhaps you can assist us in taking back our vineyard. What are they after? You don't need to know. But I assure you, if you actually help us, I'll explain. I mean, if they find it, will they leave? Do we need to fight this? Fights, there seem to be a lot of them, from what you're saying. They won't leave, no. I, we have it safe, and it's not something we want them to have, boy. It's important to us. Perhaps you can tell us what it is. It, it would really help, so that we don't damage it. Yes, we don't know what will happen during the fighting. This old man stares at you quite intently. What do you do? I try to persuade him to tell to tell me what, uh, what it actually is that they are after. It seems like he doesn't want to tell us, but... Uh, well, again, we don't want to damage it, so it's good that we know what it is. I indicate that I have powers that are not just these weapons, and uh, well, it would be a shame if something were to start burning. Roll me a persuasion check. I'll inspire on this one, then. I got 13, but I'll try again to see if I can get something better. So I use my inspiration. Well, 13 is the highest that I got. He frowns a little before remarking... Just know that it is safe. You will not be able to damage it in any way, trust me. It's not that I don't want to tell you, it's just you are strangers. For all I know, spies. If I just tell you everything, you could go to the devil himself. Although, at this point, the son remarks, Although if they were spies, father, well, he'd already know anyway. They obviously are here for it. Listen, it's not important. It's just... The lifeblood of the vineyard. It's how we grow the wine. But we have it safe. It is not there. That is why they are still searching. Although I'm pretty sure they are damaging things inside. I think they mean to destroy the vineyard once they find it. I cross my arms, leaning against a tree. So how do you mean for us to take this back if they brought half an army with them? The old man shrugs. He seems at a loss of words. The younger man comes forward, and the woman as well. Well, maybe if if you could get in the side entrance. He points and motions to a well and a little outhouse. There is an entrance inside to the vineyard from there. If you could get there stealthily, maybe you could create a distraction. Then we would be able to move in, and, and, and at least from inside... Maybe come up with a sit like a, like a keep them out type plan. Uh, the only reason we had to run in the first place was to get the children to safety. We barricaded much inside, and there are many locked doors. Although they are probably fiddling with those now. A hidden passage. That's interesting. So you don't think they're actually made it inside? The old man interrupts. They are definitely inside now, searching. But as you can see, most of their minions are outside. They are keeping a perimeter don't want us to get in. Nice. A secret passage. Alright. That sounds like a plan to me. Yes, Roshik, you take a moment then to look over. Your military training kicks in a little. You can see these two men. They are patrolling, but they don't really seem to be very disciplined about it. I mean, they look half crazed. You look at these bushes. You don't yet see the danger there. If you could get to this side entrance, well, maybe you could get in the building and then you'd be inside the building. You don't know what you'd be facing inside, but at least you may be beyond whatever these things are. And, well, who knows, a little bit of barricading here and there. Yeah. Keeps things out, doesn't it? Taking all this in, I ask, what are those bushes anyway? Do you think they've laid out some sorts of traps? They are needle blights, my son. Needle blights. 
They are dormant now, but get too close and they will awaken. Swarm you. What? I will be attacked by swarming bushes? That's just how they look when they're sleeping, boy. They are blights. You're not familiar with this term? Am I? You think to yourself. It's something you might have heard once. I mean, you're wondering what sort of creatures these things could be, but maybe they are creatures. They're called blights, after all. Interesting. Hmm. I just shrug at his question. And, uh... Yeah, well, I uh, start to get ready to make our entrance, then. Yes, I too do that. And this will be interesting, I think to myself. Adrian comes forward and remarks, All right, all right, if you can get to that door and get in, cause a distraction. We will be behind you as quickly as we can, and we have friends, do not worry. We This will hopefully get us in quickly. The skies are being watched as well, you see. And he points upwards. At this point, you notice, although it's hard to tell in this misty rain, that there are things flying above you. Not ravens. Crows. Yes, you know crows, Roshek. They are circling above. About ten or twenty. Indeed. <laughs> I, uh... Hefts the longbow, ready to drop it should I need to engage in a close combat uh, and pull my longsword. And uh, I uh, nod towards the uh, hut or whatever it is. Are we going? We are going. So tell me now, how do you approach this situation? This little side bit of the vineyard is at least a good five, ten minutes away, you will have to move through this area. Although, you obviously choose a moment where you're pretty sure these patrolling berserk men seem to be away. In fact, as you watch for a few more minutes, they go back in to the winery. Well, I suppose it'd be a good idea to try and stick to the mists and the trees as much as possible. I would, I would probably try and just run there, but it's a low profile, you know? Yes, I think that sounds like a wise plan. Very well then, you begin to walk out into the field and begin to make your way towards the winery. You choose a moment where you're sure these other men you saw aren't watching. As I said, there is mist everywhere, making it hard to see, although you can obviously see this building in front of you. As you start to move forwards, you do notice everyone else behind you moving away as well, though they move back into the forest and seem to vanish from sight for a moment. You begin moving forward. Could you please roll me whichever one you think is more suitable? A stealth check or athletics check? Both of you. Alright, then I shall go athletics. 19. 18. Stealth, that is. Roshek, you make your way forwards trying to be as silent as possible. You aren't crawling around on all fours, but you know how to move between cover and terrain. There are fences, after all. And you very quickly, there with a confident spurt, make your way to that well I mentioned. Now, very close. Looking at the vineyard from this angle, where you see the winery is an old two-story stone building with multiple entrances, thick ivy covering every wall, and iron fencing along its roof line. Uh, there is an open loading dock on the ground floor, Although that's not near you, that's on the other side now from where you are. A wooden stable of more recent construction is attached to the east side of the winery next to that loading dock. You are at a crumbling well, and just in front of you a small outhouse. And you see a door left ajar, actually, leading into this side area. Into the vineyard from this side angle. Roman, you follow behind. You are not perhaps as stealthy. You're not really used to that sort of thing. But you keep pace, and both of you make it to this well, that door in front of you, and everything is still silent. Nothing seems to have moved or even noticed you. What do you do? Seeing it stand ajar, I uh, say to Roman in a low voice, it's probably left open since they left it like this. Probably how they get out. I nod. And uh, I start making my way towards it. I follow. You make your way to the door and enter a storage area. 
Bare hooks line the walls of this storage room. Shelves to the south hold several pairs of stained wooden sandals with oversized soles. Both doors to this room hang open. The one to the west, which is where you just came in, is fitted with iron brackets and leads outside into the rain. Lying on the floor is a five foot long wooden beam. Why is there a wooden beam lying on the floor? Has it fallen from the roof? No. Looking at the door, you think it would close the door from this side and secure it quite firmly. Although, obviously, it's in a locked off position now. Ah. You look outside and then notice some of the others. They have followed you very quickly, it seems. They've just appeared by the well. And Adrian and two others, they notice you've reached the area and quickly dart in to come along beside you. We made it in. This is good. This is good. We. This is good. Hmm. Roshek, you look outside into the rain and you notice movement. The bushes. They are starting to move. They are uprooting themselves. They have the appearance now not of bushes. They are humanoid creatures tangled bunch of vine and wood. They have faces, eyes and mouths, but they're just shapes of eyes and mouths, sleeking something, and they seem to be covered in spines, or, well, on an animal they'd be spines, you assume on this sort of thing they are just splinters of wood. They are moving. You can see at least ten from here. And they are very slowly heading towards the door. Hmm. We've been noticed. Try to bar the door. And we get into the house from here. Yes, let's bar the door. Come on. You run to the door and slam the bar in place, closing the door behind you. You immediately from outside hear these things having reached the door. Faster perhaps than you fought. And you hear snickering, screeching unnatural sounds as these things began to bang on the door. Two, four, ten. They are trying to get in. They are trying to surround you. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign Curse of Strahd for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Curse of Strahd was designed by Christopher Perkins and based on the adventure Ravenloft, written by Tracy and Laura Hickman in 1983. Dungeons and Dragons is published by Wizards of the Coast. The music is created by Metatron Omega, Flowers for Body Snatchers and Word Clock and is used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more tasty dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us feedback, comments and input there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a huge thank you to our growing base of supporters. You are truly amazing and inspire us so much to keep going with the show. If you haven't yet found us on Patreon, please have a look at the links in the description and see if you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work with the show there. While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters have access to extra material such as our bonus Q&A podcast, Ask for the Moon, where we discuss all topics and questions our Patreons have for us. You can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.